Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Greenberg and in this video and the companion blog post I'm going to show you how you can create a React front-end project combined with a Flask API backend. Uh, but before I begin, I'd like to take just a quick moment of your time to remind you that I am on Patreon and that I appreciate your support as that allows me to do this and all the many other things that I do within the Python and the open source communities. Uh, so, okay, let's get to work. Uh, so for this, you need to have uh, three things installed on your machine. Uh, Node.js, uh, Yarn, which is a, a, an installer uh, for, uh, for Node, and, and then Python, a, a Python 3 uh, release, a recent release. So those three things need to be installed uh, beforehand. And with those installed, we are going to go ahead and create a, a React and Flask combined project. Uh, so feel free to follow along. And I'm going to start from the React side. Uh, so I'm going to use the Create React App uh, project or utility uh, to create a starter of uh, React project. Uh, I can call this, let's say, React Flask App. Uh, and there we go. Uh, NPX, in case you don't know, comes with Node.js. And it is, uh, I guess, sort of a pip type uh, setup. Uh, it does a little bit more, uh, even if Create React App isn't installed, it, it'll install it first before it runs it. Uh, this is now setting up our React project. It takes a while because as usual in the JavaScript world, there's a lot of dependencies, so all of those things need to be uh, installed. Uh, but uh, now we're done. So uh, we have a basic project now set up. Uh, so I'm going to change into that directory and let's take a quick look. And basically this is the, the top level structure. So uh, the, the front end is now uh, ready with, with a simple project. Uh, I'm going to add the Flask backend now. And uh, there are many, many ways to do this. Uh, what I usually do is I create another top level directory and then inside it, I put my Flask project. So I'm going to create my project in an API subdirectory. So I'm gonna change into API and here as usual, we are going to create a virtual environment. Of course, you can use whatever you want for this. If, if you don't create the virtual environments this way, feel free to do it however you want. Uh, I'm going to activate the environment and then I'm going to install Flask and I'm also going to install python.env, uh, which I'm going to use uh, in, in a minute. You, you will see uh, what I do with it. Uh, so we have it, uh, everything installed. So uh, I'm going to create a single file project for this example. But uh, if, if you're used to the, 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 the bigger application structures for Flask, such as those in my mega tutorial or, or maybe the O'Reilly book, uh, those will work exactly the same. So you will put them inside this uh, directory that you create for, for your backend. Uh, and then it, it, it will work exactly the same. So uh, api.py is going to be my backend. Uh, so let's import Flask, create an application instance. And then uh, I'm going to just create a simple route here that returns the current time. Uh, and, and then we are going to call this from from the React side and display what this route returns there. And then we we're going to end it there. Um, so this is going to be uh, get current time. And uh, we are going to return a JSON response with a dictionary. Uh, the, uh, the, the only value is going to be time and then let's say the Unix time. Let's make this uh, simple. And I need to import time here. So 
So this is our Flask API. Uh, note that I'm not using JSONify here. Uh, recent versions of Flask do not require that. If you return a dictionary, then it is uh, automatically JSONified for you. So no need to do that anymore. Uh, so I'm going to save this. And next, I'm going to create a .flaskenv file. Oops, flaskenv. And this is where we set up our Flask environment variables. Uh, and, and this file only works if you have python.env installed. This is the reason why I installed it. And when, when .env is installed, Flask looks for the .flaskenv file. And if it finds it, then it imports any variables that you define in this file uh, into the environment uh, before it runs. So this is, uh, is going to save us from having to set those uh, variables manually. So we need to set up flask app to api.py. And I'm also going to set flask env to development. And there we go. So this is our, uh, our flask project. So if I say flask run here, it's, it's ready to go. So, so now we have a simple API here. So, so this is running on port 5000. The, uh, the front end, so I'm going to CD up once again into the top level directory. Uh, this project, you will see in a moment that it runs on port 3000. So, so we have 3000 for the front end, 5000 for the back end. Uh, that can be a little bit inconvenient. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the package.json file from the React project. And this is sort of a configuration file for, for your front end. And here I'm going to go to the bottom and add a proxy key. And this is going to point to our Flask backend. And what this does is anytime you send a request to the, uh, the JavaScript web server, the one that serves the front end, if the request is not for something that the server knows about, it will redirect it into the proxy address. So basically, when we send a request for our Flask API, we can send it to the port 3000, and then this web server, which is a development web server, by the way, it will forward it into, into the port 5000. And with this, we can, uh, we can basically concentrate on only using 3000 for everything. Uh, while we keep running each front end and back end on their own ports. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do in this file, uh, the scripts section has all the commands that you use for, for the front end. And just for convenience, I'm going to consolidate all my commands, the commands that start things and, or, or do things uh, here in the scripts session. So I'm going to add a start API command that runs my Flask backend. Uh, of course, this is optional. I, I like to do it this way, but you, you don't have to. You can run Flask by itself if you want. Uh, so here I'm going to cd into the API directory and then run Flask run. And I'm also going to disable the, uh, the web browser debugger from Flask because in this project, there's no point in using it because we are only using a Flask as an API uh, backend. So we will never uh, serve a page directly from Flask. So this is never going to run. Um, in this project, I don't have tests. If I had test, uh, tests, I will add also uh, something like this. So it will be uh, Flask, maybe Flask test, which will be a, a custom CLI command that runs your, your unit tests for, uh, for the Flask project. So uh, I think this is it for the configuration. I'm going to exit. And now we are ready to run our front end and back end. Uh, or actually, there's one more thing. Uh, React sets up a Git repository for, uh, for your front end project. So let's add the Flask files to it. Uh, let's, uh, let's open the git ignore and here 
uh, we need to add our VM uh, to the dependencies. We we want those uh, those files to never get into into the Git repository. Uh, and then another thing that we need is Python three will create these PyCache directories that we don't want uh, in the repository. So if I say git status, uh, very good. So I can add my git ignored, the package JSON, and then the API directory that I just created for my backend. And there we go. Now we have a, uh, a complete project. I can commit this as Python backend. Uh, let's call it Flask backend, a little bit more appropriate. And now I have my uh, my Python uh, set up within this project. So, so now we have a combined React and Flask application. Um, let's run the front end. This is done with yarn start. This should open the example React application. There we go. Uh, we can use a split window here so that we see both at the same time. Uh, so now I'm going to open, I'm going to leave this terminal alone. Uh, this is going to be monitoring all the front end files. And every time you make a change, the project will be restarted uh, for, for the front end. So I'm going to leave this alone, open a new terminal window. And on this one, I'm going to run my Flask backend, which is now yarn start API. Oops. Oh, I know. I know what I did here. Yeah, I made a mistake. Um, so that I don't have to activate the virtual environment, I'm going to invoke Flask directly from the, uh, the virtual environment bin uh, directory. I forgot to do that. So there we go. So now we're running uh, the front end on port 3000, the back end on port 5000. The front end is configured to proxy any requests that it doesn't understand into port 5000. So we're, we're basically ready to go. Um, I'm going to open a third terminal window, and this is where I'm going to do my development. Uh, so I'm going to leave uh, the windows number one and number two running the front end and the back end respectively both have a reloader in place. So anytime I make a change to any files, front end or back end, the, uh, the, the subsystem will restart itself. So this is very convenient. I don't have to worry about those two terminals. I leave them there and they, uh, they keep uh, watching my files. Uh, so for my editing, I'm going to use Vim, but you don't have to. I, I always say the same thing. Vim is an unlikely choice. A lot of people find it difficult, and it's totally fine. Feel free to use PyCharm, Visual Studio Code, uh, you know, whatever you like. Uh, it's really no no difference. Uh, so, great. Uh, let's begin. So, so basically, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to make a call into this uh, slash time endpoint and display the return time in this page uh, from the front end. So I'm going to start from, from the JavaScript side. Let's see. I'm going to add, uh, let's see. The current time is, uh, let's start with a placeholder, something like this. Uh, there we go. So, so you can see that here it updated. Excellent. Uh, so now let's complete this. Uh, I'm going to use. Uh, the use state and the use effect from uh, from React, and uh, you you probably know this uh, in in the JavaScript community things change very fast. Uh, you may be using React and you look at this and you 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 may see that this is different to what you're used to. Maybe you're using classes and components. Uh, Yes, things change uh, quickly in the in the React and in general in the JavaScript world. So I, I'm going to use what's current today. Uh, it may not be current when you look at this, and it, it was definitely not current a few months ago. 
but you know that's the way they roll uh, so we'll go with it um, so uh, let's see let's create a, a current time state variable um, this needs a, a variable and a set uh, a set function and these are going to be initialized at zero um, and now now that we have the state we can put it here in the template uh, let's see if this works it's still working very good uh, just to make sure let's, let's put something else here very good yeah this is working and then I'm going to add the effect callback and so this is going to be a function that is invoked when this uh, this page is rendered and to avoid getting it invoked again whenever anything in the state changes I'm going to add a, uh, a an empty list which will basically defines this function as having no dependencies if I don't set this second argument to an empty list then this function is going to be invoked every time the time changes and because I'm going to change the time inside this function it will create a recursive loop and it's going to be continuously called so in this way it's only going to, going to be called once uh, so here we need to make the API call so I'm going to use fetch for that I'm going to call slash time and then so this is uh, based on promises then I'm going to get a response and I need to convert that response into JSON uh, which is another promise so next I'm going to get my data uh, which is going to be a JavaScript object um, and here we can do our logic and what we do here is we just use the set current time function and uh, if, if you recall uh, the the format of the response was uh, a single uh, key that was uh, time and then the value was the uh, the unix time so from javascript we can use dot notation for that no need to use the uh, the brackets so data dot time and that will be the number so once i save this we get the current time and there you go we have a minimal but uh, complete project that uses both the react front end and the flask back end i hope you like it uh, if you have any comments uh, feel free to write them in the blog post or in the video uh, and if you do it in any different way that you think is better uh, let me know i'd like to know uh, so thank you so much bye bye